systems. And we have Daniel Njoroge here, who is the head of marketing at InterSwitch. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, let's get right into the discussion and look at the electronic payment systems. In terms of embracing this um, in business um, uh, transactions, where are we? Great question. May I start by saying I'm very glad to be here mm -hmm. to speak on a topic I love, and it, that's what I do on a day to day. Ideally, we are very advanced as Kenya and as Africa, but there's still so many miles to go. If I may put it into context, mm -hmm. Payments is at the center of every single business transaction. The very basic form of payment is where we do business with you. I get out cash, I give it to you, good and gone. But there's, so, there's a lot of challenges that comes with actual cash payment mm -hmm. about costs, about handling the money. Now the issue then is what is the alternative? And that's where now electronic mov uh, movement of money comes in. Mm -hmm. As InterSwitch actually, our day-to-day -day job, 8 to 5, we just enable electronic movement of money. So defining what is electronic of movement of money is about anything. The moment you now are not paying cash and you are touching a card, you're paying with a mobile, you're moving money from bank account to bank account without carrying the money in cash, you're logging into a computer to make a payment, to transfer, you're sending money overseas electronically, all those now are forms of electronic payment. So mm -hmm. we have really advanced. The, the space is growing and there's much, much more to be done. In fact, I would say the future is very exciting. All right. And now even as we keep on expanding, let us look at the, uh, the very um, rural, uh, can I call it mobile areas Correct. in the country who, which are very remote and uh, cannot access these kinds of um, systems that we are uh, using. We are using, of course, M-Pesa. But now when we look at other systems of electronic payments, how do we make sure that at least um, in the transitioning, we include all of us in it? The biggest hindrance to electronic mo uh, movement of money is usually actually around cost. Mm -hmm. So when you speak about the people in the rural areas who are not able to use the modern payments we use here, think about it, it will be about access to, let's say, things like POS machines where they require a card to go and swipe. That machine itself is expensive. And that's why, as you mentioned rightly, M-Pesa have really made it better because literally you just do transactions with your phone. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what should we do in that space, it's a matter of looking at the ecosystem and saying, now, mounting this huge ATM machine in the village or in a remote area up country will cost millions of shillings. Could we then reduce this big box called an ATM machine into a small machine called a POS machine, for example, mm -hmm. and do something we call agency banking, whereby it's someone running their own shop, walk there, out of the cash they are running, you can actually withdraw or deposit money into your bank account. Mm -hmm. Even better, can we actually remove the POS machine and actually replace it with a piece of paper that you can see a number and put money there and the money gets into your account? Or even your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Things like you're able now to transfer money via USSD, which is available in a very basic phone. That is now as part of what we do at Interswitch. which we help people businesses, banks, financial institutions like circles, microfinance institutions, and even businesses themselves to be able to start getting out of cash, log into a system, or look, use a mobile phone and make the payment happen. Mm -hmm. To be honest, M-Pesa have really taught this market that mm -hmm. it is, uh, it's the best in Africa, I would say. Mm -hmm. Other countries are still major and big in cards, but now we are seeing that transition from just a, a card to a mobile, but even the card has its space, so it will be a mixture of all mm -hmm. those payments coming on, and soon we think even in the rural areas it will be big. All right, L let's also look at um, the security around this, because when you do such transactions, you want your data to be uh, kept safe, you want everything to be secure. In terms of security, um, hacks are always there. Correct. So. What usually happens when a business now decides to um, fully embrace this? Correct. Yes. The first thing I would advise any business or any bank or any financial institution is the choice of the partner you choose to work with on these payments. Mm -hmm. Make sure they are, they are vetted. Make sure their systems are top-notch because 
there is fraud yes it happens all the time but there are so many ways of mitigating it as interswitch for example we have invested billions of shillings over time in ensuring that the systems are secure we even have a platform we call the we are on their protocol we call pci dss compliant you really pay a lot of money to ensure you are that are vetted the systems are well but at the very basic level again one of the very simplest way of avoiding fraud in electronic payments is actually securing your pin there is a lot of re um, reverse engineering where people call you ask about your date of birth they ask you about your email address they ask you about your your id number and they can actually go back and actually get you to a point of giving them your pin mm -hmm. 90 percent i would say Statistically, it could be raw or slightly higher, but majority of the fraud that happens allowed the record payments is when people do not secure their PIN. Mm -hmm. Advice to people, advice to corporates, make sure that you are advising your customers, take care of your PIN. So if you are a business that is paying salaries via le and electronic payments, put in place some things like make a checker. Make a checker means one, someone uploads that information in the system but the money does not go out immediately. Someone else will log in and also confirm. And maybe even at a, that, a, a that level, it depends on how deep you want to get into the security. Mm -hmm. But beyond the pin and the things that are within your control, go for a partner who have invested heavily in security protocols that are necessary to, to put that whole payment space very safe. Mm -hmm. And now, these systems are always changing. And um, as we know, they are evolving every day. We have new entrants into the market. Now, when we look at um, transitioning into the digital world and trying to make everything simpler from even at the comfort of your house, now going forward, what are some of the new innovations that uh, can be added into this in order to make it even more um, available? Very good. So on the back end, <coughs> where we say now where the things, where the rubber meets the road, you invest in systems that are very foolproof. You invest even in what we call um, ethical hackers to actually see if someone tried to penetrate my system, can they actually do it? Those are things that you cannot really avoid. Mm -hmm. But at, on the front end now where customers are actually interacting with these systems, it's about educating their customers. And as you rightly said again, it is evolving very gradually every time. Better technology, some others becoming obsolete. We are now moving to things like we call the blockchain, that the, the promise of the technology is that it is unhackable. So those things will keep evolving. But what I tell people is that as the good people are working hard to improve the systems, <laughs> the so-called bad people are also working extra hard. <laughs> yes. And they're even as sharp or even sharper than the people are building it. So it is a continuous improvement kind of a space. We can never say that we are now 100% safe. It's about are we constantly evolving with time and ensuring we are layering the, the right security platforms in place. Like for, for example, in Interswitch, we run about 50 million plus cards on our Valve system. Valve is a card scheme that we, we, we give to banks to issue to their customers. We have continuously invested in things like chip and pin, in, in things like that party, the, um, uh, that factor uh, authentication, where let's say you're using your card online and you have put your expiry date, your card number. It does not just go through it. You have to send you a notification on a different platform to actually confirm you are the one using it. So unless the frauds are half your phone, they have your laptop, they have maybe you, because some of the evolutions that we are seeing is even using things like fingerprints to, to confirm a payment or eyelashes. You will even see some iPhones you, when you are about to make a payment, you just need to look at it to recognize it's you. And even like for you, you, are, you have specs. If you set the system when you had specs, and then suddenly you don't have it, it will not recognize you. So it is getting strict and strict and strict. KYC systems are also in place where we are now going beyond just asking you for an ID. We can take the, the information directly from things that cannot be taken out of you. Okay, so it gets quite sophisticated and it's actually, uh, I would say it's moving quite well. All right, thank you so much for joining us. That is our time. Uh, Daniel Jorogi there from Interswitch, the head of marketing, just educating us on electronic systems. All right, that's it. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. This is Business Cafe. We've come to the end. Remember, News Center coming up.